In this video, you're going to learn how to solve a right triangle. So what does that mean to solve a right triangle? Well, it basically means that you're going to solve for all the missing angles, all the missing sides. You're going to find pretty much everything in the triangle. If there's three angles and three sides, you're going to find all six pieces. Now, you're going to be given a couple of items, whether it's an angle or a side, etc. But we have to find the missing pieces. So let's go through a couple examples together and then I'll have you do a couple on your own for practice. So this first problem, you can see we have a right triangle, this 90 degree angle, and we're given this side, uh, angle is 27 degrees and the side across over here is four. So we wanna go ahead and find the missing sides, missing angles. Now we know in a triangle, all the angles add up to 180, right? But if it's a right triangle, the two acute angles have to add up to 90 because 90 plus 90 gives you the 180. So if we do 90 minus 27, that's going to give us 63 degrees for this angle B up here. Now, let's say we want to solve for this missing side right here. This is going to be side B, which is across from angle B. So what we're going to do is let's use this angle that they gave us. I like to start off with the uh, initial quantities just because they're exact they're not rounded if you made a mistake you don't carry that mistake forward so what I do is I position myself here at the angle 27 degrees and I say what trig function sine cosine or tangent ties together the opposite side and the adjacent side well you can see opposite and adjacent that's the tangent toa so what we're going to do is we're going to say the tangent of the angle tangent of 27 degrees equals the ratio of the opposite divided by the adjacent. It's always that second letter divided by the third. So that's going to be 4 over B. Now there's a property in proportions where you can switch these guys on the diagonal. So you could put B here and tangent of 27 here. B over 1 is just equal to B. So we're getting 4 divided by the tangent of 27 degrees. Let's go to the calculator and see what that comes out to. If you don't like that method, you can cross multiply. You can do one times four is four, B times tangent of 27, and then divide by tangent of 27 to get B by itself. But in this case, it looks like this is coming out to 7.85. So that's this missing side right here. And now all we're left to solve for is this hypotenuse. And again, I'm gonna go back to the original numbers just because see, this is a little bit rounded. So I'm gonna say what trig function ties together this angle this side and the hypotenuse. Well, we've got opposite and hypotenuse. That is going to be our sine ratio. So we're going to say the sine of 27 degrees is equal to the opposite side 4 over the hypotenuse, which in this case, this is little a, lowercase a, side a. So again, I'm going to use that technique of switching these on the diagonal. So a over 1 is just equal to a equals 4 divided by the sine of 27 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. On the calculator, I'm getting 8.81, and that's it. You solve the triangle. You found all the angles, all the sides. Let's do another example. Number two is a little bit uh, different, a little bit more challenging in the sense that they're giving us two sides, but they're not giving us the angles. So the first thing I would do here is I would make use of the Pythagorean theorem since I have two sides in a right triangle. And remember the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we're going to say the leg squared, 8 squared, plus this side, which is f, so f squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, 13 squared. So we have 64 plus f squared equals 169. Subtract 64 from both sides, that's 105, and take the square root, and you can see that f is equal to the square root of 105. That's an exact answer. We can also get a, a decimal approximation here. So this is about 10.25 approximately. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve for the angle. So let's say, for example, I wanted to solve for angle D. So what I do is I position myself at that vertex, at that angle, and I say what trig function ties together the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Well, that's the sine, the opposite over hypotenuse. But when you're solving for the missing angle, you want to use the inverse trig function. So we'd want to do the sine inverse. So it's the sine inverse, that's what that minus 1 means, of the opposite side 8 over the hypotenuse 13. So let's see what that comes out to. You might have to press the second key on your calculator to get that sine inverse. 
8 divided by 13, that comes out to about, I'm going to round to the nearest degree here because it's almost 38 degrees. So this is 38 degrees. If I want to solve for angle F, I know these two acute angles have to add up to 90. So that means that angle F must be 90 minus 38, which is 52 degrees. And that's it, you solved it. You found all the sides, all the angles. Let's go through two more examples and I'll have you practice these on your own to get some more practice. Okay, before we jump into these last two examples, which I'd like for you to try to practice on your own first, we'll go through them together. If you like the way that I explain things and you want to learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or College Algebra, check out the links in the description below. I've got a couple of video courses there for sale and I walk you through step by step the important uh, concept that you would learn in an Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 course. So check those out, but let's go ahead and dive into these problems here. How would you solve this triangle? How would you find the missing angles and the missing sides? Well, if I was going to do it, I would notice that we have these two angles here. I can easily solve for this third angle by knowing that the triangle angles add up to 180. That's the triangle angle sum theorem. So I can also do a shortcut. I can say 90 minus 43 is 47 degrees because the two acute angles have to add up to 90 plus 90 is 180. Now let's go ahead and solve for, let's say this side over here, lowercase g, that side g. What trig function ties together the opposite and the hypotenuse? That's the sine, right? So, so we're gonna say the sine of 47 degrees is equal to the opposite side g over the hypotenuse 12. I'm gonna multiply both sides by 12 to get g by itself and let's go to the calculator. So that comes out to 12 times the sine of 47 which is about 8.78. Now all we have to do is solve for this side lowercase h or side h. Again, I'm going to go back to the original numbers, which actually I used 47, but 47 was exact. Sometimes when you have a rounded number, it's better to use the ones that gave you initially. And so let's go ahead and do, we'll use 47 again. So we'll do adjacent and hypotenuse, which is the cosine. Okay, so we're going to say the cosine of 47 degrees equals adjacent h over hypotenuse 12. So again, we're just going to multiply both sides by 12 to get h by itself. And 12 times the cosine of 47 is 8.18. And you solve the triangle. You found all the angles, all the sides. For our last problem, number four, how would you do this one? How would you find all the angles and all the sides? Well, let's take a look here. It looks like if I was going to do this, we were given two sides, which means we can find the third side using our Pythagorean theorem. So this is going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to b squared, because remember the angle and the side, they're like a pair. Capital letter is the angle, lowercase is the side, and we use the same letter. Okay, so we can have 25 plus 144. It's weird seeing b here because we always say this is equal to c squared, right? So this is 169 equals b squared. Take the square root of both sides and you can see that b is equal to 13. So that's this missing hypotenuse here. Now let's go ahead and solve for one of the angles. Let's go ahead and solve for angle A. So if we position ourselves here at angle A, we see we have the opposite side and the adjacent side. Opposite adjacent is our tangent. But because we're solving for the missing angle, we're going to do the tangent inverse of the opposite side over the adjacent side to get the measure of angle A. So let's see what that comes out to on the calculator. Again, you might have to press your inverse key, your second key to get that tangent inverse. And that's coming out to 67.38. So let's just write that down here. So 67.38. And then to find angle C, because these two acute angles are complementary, they add up to 90, I'm just going to do 90 minus 67.38, which gives us 22.62 degrees, and you solve the triangle. So great job if you're able to get those two problems. If you want to learn more about trigonometry, the measurements in triangles. I've got an introduction to trigonometry video here on YouTube. I'll put the link right there. Go ahead and click on that video. Follow me over there and we'll get some more practice working with right triangle trigonometry. I'll see you there.